the head is not the similarity, you have the option to adjust SRA, VTA right at the cartridge without moving the arm from the horizontal mode, without altering any of the static balance parameters of the tone arm. So no alternation in vertical tra uh, tracking force while aligning SRA, VTA. No serious alternation in effective length, everything stays stable. Then we are running to two small titanium pipes into the main joint. Then the arm pipe, the arm pipe, okay, for you, for you, I show you a sample. It's a sample of the arm pipe. So it's very thin, it's very light, and this is double the length of the arm one. So there's a carbon fiber pipe inside and you notice there's a small gap, very small. This is blocked with a very special device on both ends together. So you have two pipes, both very stiff, very rigid, but in a different way. You block them together, then we are sucking by vacuum the liquid in the gap between the two and seal it. So there's no air anymore between the two, just liquid. The cables are running in the inside of the carbon fiber pipe. So you have an absolute a media which is light, inside totally damped. You, it is not the tone arm that is damped, it's just the pipe. But all the mechanical coupling is only taking place on the outside, on the titanium. So you have a very fast energy transfer, something I'm always going for. But you have a transport media which is absolutely dead silent itself. Then you're coming to the bearing. In the bearing, you have the classical cardanic bearing or double gimbal, no unipivot, because I was going for fully balanced, fully dynamic balanced mode, which is possible in unipivot, but not really what I would like to do. Then you notice that the uh, actual counterweight assembly is very small, and it's, very, it's sitting very close to the bearing. This is possible. What you see there is not lead, it's much heavier. It's HD17. HD17 is uh, tungsten powder pressed together under high temperature and high pressure, creating something with a specific weight between 17 and 18 kilograms per liter. 17. So it's heavier than mercury. Yeah. Mercury is 13. Yeah, it's much heavier. It's, uh, it's a bit short of platinum and of gold. So this enables us, even the shaft is made out of that. So we have high concentration of mass, very close to the bearing, resulting in a very low, for a 12 inch tone arm, effective moving mass in the horizontal plane. And furthermore... Did you measure, did you measure effective moving, effective mass? Yeah. What is the range? With the, with the head shell? With the head shell, 16.8 to 17. 16.8 to 17. Did you calculate or measure? Calculate and I tried to measure. And with I succeeded. The, with the reference cartridge with yeah. known compliance. A, uh, cartridge with a known compliance of 7. Very stiff. 7. Compliance unit. Yeah. Published by manufacturer or measured by you? Published by manufacturer and not measured by me, by the, but by the Technical University in Munich. So it was confirmed? Yeah, it was confirmed. So then you notice that even uh, the inner ones, the small counterweights, the ones that are sitting on the inside, can move. This is to compensate the breakdown torque in the arm vents. Every tone arm with an offset angle has a breakdown torque. If you wouldn't have any bearing, it would just tilt over. Resulting in a static force that is constantly pressing into the inner group wall. Ah. Resulting in increased skating force. Compensating this where it occurs means you can eliminate that and free, making the needle itself force free from at least from this unwanted force. Then you have uh, the option of uh, you have magnetic anti skating. The anti skating is dynamic, means there are small counter magnets set in the insert which are corresponding to the tangential curve you have chosen. If you are going, say, for whatever reason, from Berwald to Stevenson. You get another insert which corresponds with the effective length of the arm and the tangential curve you have chosen. And last, not not last, you also have, of course, because by customer demand, so to speak, the option to adjust VTA 
SRA on the fly in the old-fashioned way by moving the arm up and down. I don't recommend. How many millimeters? Up and down. Totally. Up and down, maximum of 20. Plus minus 10. So to speak. Yeah, plus minus 10. Depends. You are mounting the arm. You got three different cylinders like these. They are slightly indented on the on the underside, so they are only sitting on this rim. Then the mounting screw. goes through there, this one, and actually the arm itself is sitting with three stainless steel hardened spikes on here, and you can, if you move, if you watch now, the head of the arm, mm -hmm. you can level the bearing of the tone arm independent from the plinth it is sitting on. Oh, wow. Do you have a piece of paper? Paper. I want a sketch. I saw a paper, yes. Oh, what's the last And then you had the, 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 you had this, the, the uh, tracking force with the, the, the yeah. cylinder on the right there? Yeah. yeah. This is the adjustment. This is, an, this is a nano positioner. This nano positioner means the, uh, this is so incredibly small thread there, you need six and a half revolutions for one millimeter. This is actually not coming from audio, this is from uh, nano optics. And it's made for adjusting mirrors very precisely in laser technique. And you're using it for? And I'm using this for setting the tracking force. <coughs> And that's by putting it in that cylinder. Yeah, and the cylinder, this is not assembled here. I didn't want to show it yet. Yeah. This is this is actually this is moving. There's another cylinder, you see it here, which is moved while turning this one. Right. And then there is a magnetic arm which goes very close to the bearing on the underside of the uh, and that's for the fine tuning of it, of, and, and you do the rough tuning with the, with the counterweights. No, you balance the arm, the arm once with the counterweight. Right. You balance it to the point that you are stable. Right. This is dynamic balance mode. Right. And then the tracking force is not set by moving the counterweight, but just by moving the magnetic arm. Right. So you, so the, the dynamics of the arm don't change. Right. You, you, okay. Excellent. It's it's comparable. If, if you see, you know, you do take an uh, arm like the FR Fidelity Research arm right, so right. yesterday, yep. and they um, do apply the uh, tracking force by spring, right? Which is born to resonances itself, which must be damped, which is is in the Fidelity Research arms, but it is only damped by trees that is sitting around the spring. It's a large spring.